USS Yorktown. Yeah, it's yeah. incredible the number of lives that this has touched worldwide. Absolutely. I will certainly never forget, never forget this moment. Same. Like you said last night, Daniel, that this is the privilege of a lifetime. So, yes, agreed. Mike and Hans and our team on shore, I know you guys have been waiting eagerly with so much anticipation for this. Um, to me, sitting here, this feels like a tremendous success. Uh, I know we're not off the bottom yet and, and back up safely on board, but uh, what's, your, what's your take on, on, the, uh, on the dive so far? Well, I have to say that I was um, very wary of attempting um, Atalanta only, um, even though I thought of it, <laughs> but, or I proposed it. Um, and I was just like, well, I don't know if that's the best idea, but I'm gonna bring, anyway. Because, you know, I, I haven't seen this, I've only seen this vehicle dive twice before, which was two, two and three days ago, right? Yeah. Um, I, I have used Argus before, but that's a different vehicle. Um, so I, I was worried about how much um, uh, uh, up and down there would be. I was worried about the lighting. I was worried about, you know, just, just how we'd move around. But this has been so much better quality video than I expected. I expected it to be like just you know be, maybe look at the flight deck and then be done i was really thinking this is going to be a one to two hour dive once we got on bottom uh, oops um so i'm actually really amazed and and uh, impressed that we've been able to really get i think footage of almost every aspect of the wreck that's not like an interior surface um, had we had one of the herculeses uh you know we might have ventured into an elevator shaft or uh, up under a few other things but uh really we you know we covered the majority of of what we wanted to so i'm i'm really just over the moon about that well thank you for sharing that perspective mike i love that story of when we share those ideas and then we're wondering if that idea we just shared was any good at all <laughs> yeah. and, uh, it turned out it was a great one where i'm glad you i'm glad you came up with it yeah i'm so glad it's paying off the way it is it would have been so much better, though. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not go there. Let's not oh, go there, Robert. And that's well, why every that, that's, <laughs> why, that's why every crew needs a Robert. That's right. <laughs> that you ship know, sailed. Like this is not what we can do. We can do so much better. But yeah, but I'm I'm also fortunate situation. But yeah. yeah, but the other option was nothing. So yeah. Yeah, I'm also like... Uh, but you don't want to give people the impression that this is as good as we get. Right, <laughs> right. No. <laughs> Robert is an incredible explorer and, and knows uh, knows what's possible in this scenario. And I know it, uh, it uh, bugs him more than anybody else that uh, little Hercules wasn't... Uh, wasn't yeah. wasn't quite ready to come down, but uh, we put a lot into getting that ready to go too. Mm -hmm. He did. I know you yeah, did. Yeah, really did. I know you mm -hmm. did. It's hey, like just just means you got to bring another another expedition. Got to come oh, out yeah. again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready for that. <laughs> yeah, that's like we've been saying for the geology dives, where um, it's it's often better to have a rock than not have a rock, and we have a rock in this case. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> And it's it, it's uh, proving to be much better than uh, what we anticipated, and we're getting some amazing data out of this. I just can't believe there's uh, like thousands or tens of thousands of board feet of Douglas fir sitting down here at the bottom <laughs> of the ocean. That's uh, I can't get over that and flight. Deck. It's well, it's, well it's, it's compromised though. <laughs> you couldn't bring it up; it would turn to mush pretty instantly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that cellulose. Is that's coming from Hans, who's uh, had that experience on many, many wrecks, wooden shipwrecks, and uh, yeah. watching this stuff disappear in shallower depths, just yeah. uh, crumble in your well, hands. Also, just think, this is only one of the ship, uh, one of, only one of the carriers that they made a deck for. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I would agree with with Mike. You know, this has been uh, productive beyond what I had imagined. This survey, you know, as slow and deliberate as it is, and careful confirms 
you know, important narratives of the, the of the loss event and the history. It also showed us new information about the attempts to save the ship um, that I, I think we've got a pretty good bead on. And, and it raised some new questions about, you know, other parts of the vessel, like the missing stern area, uh, jettisoning the gun, jettisoning the guns on the starboard side, etc. So if you hit all those three, you know, I think you're you're answering some archaeological and historical questions, which is probably what we should be doing. Absolutely. But I, um, I think if we continue in this way, Mike and I are going to take shifts rather than uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> the whole. Yeah, you guys have been running the marathon uh, watch yeah. here, which yeah. has been really impressive. Mm -hmm. But it, but it's also been very moving. The history and the it? significance of this I vessel. I think we just about made it there. Yeah. Has been uh, striking yeah. and very moving yeah. for me Maybe personally. Yeah, I'm gonna. Thank get you. Can yeah, and, and I mean the the whole team has done done really well. Like you guys have been amazing, ma maneuvering the ships. Everybody being patient for the most part. Um, <laughs> me least of all. Um, you know, so I think that you know us taking shifts, we're, we're also more comfortable with the operation now. You know, for for later for next ones. Yeah, now um, that some of that uncertainty's out of the way. Yeah. Because I, I think, if, I mean, as tired as I was, I think if I had gone away, I, I wouldn't have been able to really sleep. <laughs> I'd have been like, what are they doing now? <laughs> We're glad you stayed in here the whole time. Like, <laughs> yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. I, I'd love to also pass that question, if I can, over to over to Silver Spring, uh, to our Exploration Command Center, just to just to get their thoughts on on uh, on the dive and and uh, what we've what we've accomplished, what we've seen so far. Any thoughts from you know, ECC? I, I, yeah, certainly. Thanks for the opportunity again. It, you know, wrapping up. You know this uh, this exceptionally brilliant opportunity. I think on 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 all counts, but I think the final word really rests with um, a celebration of the ship. You guys have come through so much uh, to get us really groundbreaking data. And that's not just for us here in this room. This is for history. This is for archaeology. Um, this is for uh, for folks that continue to have an interest in, in keeping these stories alive um, on, on on both sides of the conflict, certainly, um, on on all sides of history. So thank you to Nautilus, to Operations, to all the watches for um, maintaining just such a great attitude and willing to work through all the different moves and, and changing things up a bit and executing such a great performance over over a long run. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. It's been a real real treasure to have you get have you virtually on board with us all throughout the dive. We appreciate you staying up through the night uh, on the East Coast and uh, adding all of your expertise and knowledge and context uh, to this story. Help us do the best we can to honor it. Yeah, they lot. had a very early start in Silver Spring <laughs> with this one. They did. Mahina, I'd love to. I'd love to also hear your thoughts as as uh, one of our guides, as someone who's been bringing us into these sacred waters uh, of Papahanaumokuakea. What are some of your final reflections on this this dive on the Yorktown? Mahalo, Dan. Um, so the exploration of the Mona Nuiakea, the vast and expansive ocean. It provides us with the opportunity to understand with empathy, with humility, and with admiration. Um, ocean exploration and the huaka'i, these journeys that we go into the kai'uli, these sacred ocean depths, they allow us to connect with our sea, our kai, to one another, to communities, classrooms, and it allows us to collaborate, educate, and learn together. I have a olalono e'ao, um, a Hawaiian proverb, Ike aku, ike mai, kokua aku, kokua mai. Pela i hola, ka no hona ohana. And it means to recognize others. Are we circling there? Be recognized, help others, and to be helped. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> 
I and I think I it speaks. Um, I think he 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 wrote Zoom. Uh, <laughs> Zoom. <laughs> Are you ready? Sorry, Zoom. Yeah. Okay. And Zoom. No worries. I didn't mean to disturb you. Please, please continue. No, of course. Yeah. Um, and I think this just speaks to the exchange of and the mutual help and recognition. Pupukahi um, holomua. So it means to unite and to move forward. And by working together, we make progress. And this speaks volumes to the partnerships at play to execute this Ala Omwana Kaiuli expedition. So once again, mahalo to all of the collaboration, all of the partnerships, and the help, the kokua um, that has taken place. You know, starting from the proposal and the preparing of within the past two years up until this point, being here on board, um, seeing these images, and working with this crew, uh, this you know, talented and skilled crew. So just thank you um, with a heavy, humble heart. Mahalo. Mahalo, no, Mahina. Mahalo, thank you, mahalo. mahalo. Thank you, Robert. Yeah, are those all davits there that we're looking at? I guess at? so, yeah. Just wanted to see more of that catwalk. Thank you. Perfect. Can you zoom back out? Okay, yep. coming out. As a, as a father, as an educator, as a communicator, someone who, um, Loves this planet. That? Is that a know. pattern? I don't know why it's like that. It looks like a pattern to me, doesn't it? Yeah. Is it just the, the way of the paint and the structures going away? Could be. You want to zoom in again? Okay. Ready to zoom? Yeah, just a medium zoom to look at that pattern. Look at that. Maybe that's just the way the silt is built up. Yeah, I don't. That's. It looks like it. I mean, it, it looks like it's different colors, but we're so far away. I don't. I don't know that it may just be the camera. You know. Yeah, I'd like the light drop just, off. Yeah. yeah. It might be the camera. It's, it's very hard to tell, though. It's strange. Well, we we got good footage of it. We can always look at it later. Definitely. Yeah. Huh. Weird. Just some of my, my final thoughts. This is Daniel Kinzer, Science Communication Fellow, as a, as a father, as an educator, as a voyager. Yeah, we're pretty far away. You know, as uh, someone who yeah, loves I'm, Hawaii. I'm trying to get us back there. Someone who loves the ocean deeply um, and, and is so concerned for the future of our planet, the future of our global community, of our community in, in Hawaii. Um, it's collaborations like this. It's, it's remembering like this. It's honoring. It's entering with respect and humility and aloha at, uh, working together with this whole team just gives me tremendous hope um, it reminds me that uh, despite the greatest challenges that we might face and and times of conflict that we can we can unify we can come together mm -hmm. we can uh, find reason and uh, capacity for for moving forward uh, towards a better future and um, this exploration, to me, to, to me, really reflects that, and so I just appreciate everyone that's been a part. Whether you're viewing online from home or school, you might have stayed up through the night with Mike um, <laughs> here in the control van. But it's just a remarkable group of friends, collaborators. Uh, just to be surrounded by by masters and experts mm -hmm. is uh, in this sacred place is just such a such a gift. So Thank mahalo you. nui to everyone. Thank you, Daniel. Well said. Thank you. It is a gift. Well, we appreciate that. And Robert, so you know what? we're full wide now. Yeah. You know, Mike, this is this I'm sediment. Trying is to lateral over there a little bit, and we can get a better view. Yeah, of it. It's really it's fine. It's Paint built pattern. up really high on this yeah, side, but also that. This is the side that Haman was tied up on, and this is the side where Haman blew up. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm pretty sure it's just the sediment mounding, making the illusion of. To my tired eyes, de oh. deformations and you know. all. Yeah, Haman would have w sunk immediately in, in Yorktown drifted. I don't expect that we would see it right next to it. No, no, not the Haman. Oh, being oh, here. oh, I see. I'm saying any concavity, any oh, yeah, yeah, damage. Yeah. I see. 
indirect damage from that or direct damage from the torpedo strike. I think the mom was tied up pretty much amidships. He was tied up against the uh, the island. Yeah. Um, and I, the the uh, Yorktown was can't uh, was tilted to port. To port. So he was exposing it was the lower exposing bilge. his bilge yeah. keel. So I really think all that damage is going to be uh, buried in the mud right now. Right. Front row, you guys have been doing such an incredible job by uh, gifting us with this view of the USS Yorktown, and I would love to know your, well, maybe not Roberts. We already heard Roberts' <laughs> final thoughts. But uh, everyone else in the front row, no, just kidding, Robert. We'd love to hear from you, yeah. too. But uh, <laughs> uh, but would just love to hear your thoughts on, on Can this we zoom dive. Can You don't think th this is the mural, do you? No. No, it looks kind of like it's rust. Just right, Robert. It's weird. It's like a Exterior hull. Is it what? But it's like... On the, hull on the right side. I don't know. It looks like it's different colors to me. Oh, it is. I think I'm making stuff up. Yeah, I think it's just rust coming through the paint. You know? Oh, yeah. So the white is the, uh, is the paint. Is the paint. The, oh, you know, that makes more sense. It's just rust coming through. Yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah, and we're seeing some color bands in uh, Atalanta's illumination. Yeah. All right, front row. We're done trying to uh, decipher the code on the side of the ship. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> guys, uh, yeah. All right, I got to come up a little bit. Coming wide. Although the other side was pristine. Yeah, I think we're here. We're, we're close we're like to where the Haman was tied up, but... Uh, yeah. There's something different going on on this side with the uh, surface yeah. deterioration that's not going on on the other side. That's really interesting. Could it all be related to fire or? Yeah, I mean, there's so many factors there. Yeah. Almost does look like uh, when you do a really quick job of putting wallpaper on something yeah. and, you, and you just glue only <laughs> strips of the wall and then try to slap the wallpaper on, it comes off. Well, Almost it's a bunch like of that. plates that are all welded on there, so you got weld joints and stuff that imagine the corrosion is going to be different in different spots there. Oh, yeah, for sure. Catalina, any time to uh, to share some final thoughts with us on your experience so far? Yeah, no, this has been really incredible. Um, I just, yeah, it's it's uh, mind mind boggling. Really, has been like the best descriptor for it. Um, I think right here at the very end, just from the navigator's position, I almost want to be down there and just kind of pull out Atlanta along for this last little stretch. <laughs> Again, those, <laughs> those ship movements are just frustratingly I'm like can, lagging. I'm like but, Kenya, though? <laughs> yeah. It's like I've do, I've, we've done our best here. And I mean, I'm still really, really pleased with how it's gone. So truly no complaints. Yeah, you've done an awesome job. M move, Thank moving, you. moving this much cable and vehicle at this depth is crazy. So, yeah, yeah. it's been yeah, it great. Trying to keep track of you know, you where you ship? are as yeah. yeah. you're shifting around. Projecting outboard. It's an entire team effort. Uh, Cut the yeah, uh, like yeah, it's canting outward. The, yeah. the hull is it, it broke. That could be Haman damage. Oh wow! Yeah, why would that be canted outboard like that? That's a weird. It could you be want to zoom landing impact. Yeah. Well, I don't know if zoom would give us much. So we get a perspective on it like this. Okay. Zach, you've had a, a great front row, a great front row seat to this uh, to this whole dive and expedition, sitting there next to Robert and and uh, in the in the co-pilot seat. What are what are some of your final thoughts? Um, I I enjoyed my time. Uh, I mean, Robert's taking control most of the time, but you know I'm still enjoying my time right here and you know observing and 
like he said before, it, 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 it's slightly frustrating that we can't get more, and I feel like we could do more, but it's just like, you no, know, at the same time, you know, I'm blessed that we're able to get what we can for right now, and, you know, hope in the future maybe get more detailed uh, exploration inside, or maybe just like the viewpoints and stuff like that, we can get better next time. Yeah, there's a line there. A ladder? Yeah, but yeah, I'm looking. I'm looking at. Out. I'm looking at this line. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But again, yeah. we're we're pointed up. We're only 15 degrees down. We're quite a ways away. Yeah. No. So we're you know, that's uh, you know, like 12 meters or something to the ship. Yeah, we're very close to where we started. You know, to the it, stack. If Haman was tied alongside and we're midships, here's a ladder. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Can you talk more about that connection in terms of uh, was Haman towing actively at that time or were they just tethered together? No, uh, Haman was uh, alongside assisting with uh, firefighting and, and I think pumping of, uh, of flooded compartments when, uh, when the I-168 uh, I fired torpedoes at the two ships. So they, it wasn't actively towing, uh, it, was, it was assisting with uh, rescue and, and uh, damage control. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna call up and see if we can give us one last little tug up this way. <laughs> Good. Bridge now. Could we move two zero meters at bearing zero three zero? Is this a boom sticking out here? What, is, what do we got here? Yes. With this line coming Thank up. Thank you. Over. It could be. Cable or a line? See, I don't know what would, would peel outboard like that. I think it's this. That just broken off and flipped outboard? Yeah. And then that tub would be... Oh, no, maybe not. Maybe, well, maybe. So that we're not quite at the stack yet, which is right here. So I'm. it's it's probably back here somewhere. It's probably this. And that's the tub. So that's just part of the tub bent out? Yeah, that's a gun tub there. Yeah. Oh, there's something oh, bigger. Oh, so oh, that's, wow. that, that's the mount we saw right at the start. Oh, yeah, we're back yeah, to where we started. Yeah. Yay. We're done. Hey, we made it. <laughs> so yeah, so that's the that's the that's the davit that we saw when we first uh, moved off. It, that's this, the crane yeah. davit that was that we saw. Remember, it was pointing away from us when we were on the other side right. of the stack. Oh, there's the boom. Yeah, yeah. the boom, the boom. That's the word. Yeah, it's the crane. And the so boom. right past that is the are the stacks where we first came down on the wreck. Yeah. Perfect. And that's a full circle. Maybe uh, maybe a good time to. Um, to see if Daniel, I believe he's still back there, Daniel Wagner, our expedition leader, co-expedition lead, chief scientist. We've made a full circle back where we started. Um, you have any any closing thoughts on, uh, on this dive you'd like to share? Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Dan. Yeah, it's been an extraordinary, uh, almost a yeah, full day here on the seafloor and uh, yeah much more than we we hope we could acquire with the tools we had at our disposal uh, the plan here just wanted to look ahead uh, especially for our folks at the exploration command center in silver spring uh, so since we have done a full loop and uh, of the sea uh, of the shipwreck and, and gotten some really good close-ups of the, the main features uh, the plan is we'll do the pull off bottom here in about 15 minutes, uh, secure the vehicles on deck. It will be a long uh, journey to the surface and then a 12 hour transit towards our next exploration uh, target. And it'll be the same kind of pattern, very slow assessment of conditions. Uh, right now, weather forecast predicts uh, that conditions will remain stable and decreasing over the next two days, so the wind, weather window seems uh, uh, just quite optimal. And so if everything
holds, and if we see what the predictions hold, we might have a chance to explore some of the other archaeological sites from the Battle of Midway. Uh, stay tuned, we'll provide time estimates, but we should be on site tomorrow morning, Hawaii time first thing, do a map of the, 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 the place, uh, assess the base launch site, and then there'll be another you know, four to five hour descent before we, <laughs> we get there. Can um, we uh, zoom in, Amber? Yes, zoom in. That sounds wonderful, Daniel. And this is how we know we're back at the aft end of the island because there's one of the four quads. Hey, look, it's quite late. <laughs> this is nice because it doesn't have smoke coming off it. <laughs> right where we want to look. <laughs> Gosh, I need a magnifying glass. And a few things here for our operational team, both on board and, and on shore at the ECC, who have been working through the night. Um, so these next 12 hours, we really encourage folks to get Thanks. some rest, because <laughs> uh, if everything goes according to plan, uh, there'll be another intense uh, 24 hours after that. So really encourage people to sleep and get some rest. Uh, we'll provide updates as soon as we know estimated okay, times. Back out. Okay, coming out. Keep this train boom in sight here. Yeah. Good. And that if it's like the forward end, this would be the other quad underneath the boom, oh, I'm yeah. guessing. That's the other gun mount. There were four of these quads and they're all over there on the side of the island. We uh, zoom in again, Amber? Okay, coming in. Uh, I'm not sure what's underneath there. Huh. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Daniel, so thankful that uh, Kanaloa, the ocean, uh, is cooperating and inviting us to uh, to honor not only not only the Yorktown, but maybe also some of the other archaeological targets associated with this, and and uh, servicemen and women and personnel and communities and cultures that that span an ocean and uh, and span a planet. Um, certainly, a, a weekend of hope. Uh, weekend of hope and, and of honoring and remembering. Um, so absolutely, again, a big mahalo to, to Daniel Wagner and Megan Cook, our expedition leads. Um, Captain Pavel doing a great job and his crew on board and then amazing crew at the Exploration Command Center in Silver Spring and here in the control van. And, yeah, I'm blown away, incredibly grateful that everything came together the way that it has. What an experience. Okay, Just, we uh, zoom back out. Okay, come out. Thank you. And all of the stories that are being shared from all of these different people, uh, and, uh, from our shore team, from our crew, from folks watching us. Thank you. I also just want to echo a thanks to our uh, data engineering team, Matt, on board, making sure that this gets out to everyone. Yes. Incredible, the folks working to Do bring the deep sea. Again, uh, we're going to be coming up here. I don't know if he had plans for the wire. Bringing the deep sea all the way into classrooms, living rooms, office spaces Somebody, around the world. You go see if Ken's all right. Like, we're coming up, and then uh, if you yeah, wanted so to wash the wire or do something. Okay. On that note, um, you know, at your guys' uh, pace, if you want to probably back away from the wreck um, and and get it yourselves into whatever position you want to come up, we are ready to, uh, okay. to depart the seabed. Yeah. All right. As we get ready to leave Yorktown, this is... Uh,
at the Expedition Command Center here in Silver Spring. Just want to send another thank you out to our team at Nautilus. I really appreciate all your efforts to make this happen and, and actually fire some really amazing imagery and data for us. For the folks uh, tuning in at home or away, uh, you have to understand this is not easy. It takes a huge effort to make it happen and some huge talent. And the fact that the Nautilus team was able to bring these images to us together, to hear, bring us together and these images um, to us today uh, was pretty amazing. Uh, understanding what they had to go through to make this happen. So thank you much. Really appreciate it. And uh, as you back away from the wreck, we're going to be signing off here in Silver Spring. So thank you. All right. Thank you guys for all your help, too. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Shoreside. Mahalo, Nui. Please enjoy you your Saturdays. Get, get some rest. Um, you can just drive the ship ahead. So yeah, thank ahead. you, Jeremy and crew, uh, everybody there in Silver Spring. Heading, you mean? Yeah. Uh, okay. One last thing I wanted to uh, point out here. So obviously that the story here uh, is a sad story Should I just get him to track 80 a line? years ago. We Does learned a tremendous amount okay. in these last 20 okay. hours okay. about okay. the site. Um, and you know, it was a, a tough four days, 81 years ago, a lot of pain, a lot of sorrow. And we hope that some healing has since happened yeah, to many brave men and women that were involved. Up. And come from up. the study of these sites, a lot of good com good can come, and we've already seen that with the collaboration, people coming together, people from all kinds of different institutions, nations, hey, Amber, disciplines, we, uh, archaeologists, historians, the, the natural the scientists, social here. scientists, yeah. engineers, all working together to better understanding. Mahalo. Minus uh, necessary ops communications, maybe it's appropriate now to just recognize another minute, another minute of silence as we prepare to move off the USS Yorktown. I think uh, maybe we want to do the, the drum image, which is the lower right of the quad up there. Yeah. Do you want that in there? I want that in the big, yeah. Yeah, you got we it. We want to look at the wraps going on. Okay. Yeah, we're uh, like, we're one. right back where we started. <laughs> Almost exactly. That's, yeah, that's a good view. Good. Look, we ended up right back where we started at. <laughs> <laughs> Mahalo, everyone, for listening, for going on that circle with us. Mahalo to our ROV pilots, navigator, bridge, video engineer, data engineer. Thank you to the back row. Thank you to all of the people connected to this in various ways who have uh, helped us rediscover and remember this story. I think on the, the end wraps, when it goes in the end and then comes back, that's where we want to kind of keep an eyeball on it. Well, we don't want to get any gaps in there, especially on new wire. Yeah. Because we have a, there's a, you know, one bad spot where it kind of does a little jog. And is it on the right side? Translates. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think it is, actually. Is that right? Yeah, because I remember seeing it yesterday when yeah. we were going down and I saw it for a second. And I think it's like 3,800 or somewhere around there. But anyway, we just, on the on the ends, when it transitions back and forth, that's where we want to keep an eye peeled. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I, I just did that. I think it should be in there. Yeah, yeah, thank you. You're uh, listening to the team do all the coordinating involved with bringing Atalanta back to the surface. The 
the winch is uh, is rolling and Atalanta is slowly slowly going to be making making its way back up to the surface and uh, our archaeology team will quickly make their way to bed I hope and uh, get some rest after being up all night and they have more than earned it yeah, more than earned it for sure. As have our expedition leaders, I, I, I doubt they'll get much rest, but I, I hope they find some time, uh, find some time for some rest as well. Uh, we'll be, we'll be uh, celebrating some, celebrating the safe arrival of Atalanta back on deck and acknowledging the great job of all of the crew and of the ROV with, uh, with some cultural protocol and uh, when that's appropriate and. And uh, so thankful to uh, have been sitting next to you, Mahina, on this journey. And, uh, and yes. thank you. Oh, mahalo, Dan. For all of your insights, all of your ike that you shared, your mana, all your thoughts. Um, I just spoke with Malia. Uh, she is also supporting us on board. And we would like to, when she does arrive up to the control van, sing a mele, share right a mele of yeah. gratitude. So when she comes and kind of settles in, then we would like to share that just with our viewers, just to kind that of look okay. commemorate to all of the, of right. the bravery of really the soldiers, servicemen and women. That's beautiful. Mahalo, Mahina, right. and Malia, who we'll see shortly. And We might need a whole chant book, a whole only book. We have a few hours to the surface. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Most definitely, yeah. <laughs> it's about a four or five hour ascent estimated. I don't know. Robert Robert looks like he's... Uh, well, we want to we want to be careful with the wire here because we had a bad spot. We want to try and fix that. Okay. So, so we're going to slow down when we do the, the ends of the drum when it makes the transition. Yeah. So Make sure player. it's smooth. Huh? Yeah. Our viewers at home, they can't see that, but uh, some cameras are uh, right on the coil as we as we spool uh, spool yeah. this cable back up to the surface, and and uh, Robert and others are keeping a close eye, making sure that, that, that all happens smoothly. Yeah, it's it's our literal <laughs> lifeline for our vehicles, so we try to take extremely good care of it. That's right. go faster though. We're gonna be here in eight hours. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Slow and steady. We don't have good lumps here. Atalanta is going to be mission critical, it sounds like, over the next uh, couple of days. Our only only fully operational vehicle for this depth and our best chance of visiting some of these archae other archaeological sites, which are, I believe, even deeper. Um, so it's uh, uh, some more yeah. incredible How opportunities. How deep are they? What's that? The next site. Uh, I don't know, actually. I mean, I they're know. not Robert Waters' depths. They haven't <laughs> been really not as deep as you go, my friend. But well, uh, I just, you know, we're kind of pushing the limits on our tension. So. Yeah, we are. We are. Yeah. I don't think they're much, much deeper than this. And I may be wrong. They might not even be quite as deep, but I, I know they're close. I think I had heard 5,700 tossed around. 5,700? Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, I just, I'm just saying. They, I are, they, they, are, <laughs> almost, they are almost <laughs> Robert Waters. I was going to say. <laughs> Still not quite, but almost. <laughs> good. Giving him a run for his money. Am I allowed to tell him the Sears compressor story and the and the hose, the, the, the good old diving stories Robert was telling me? I don't, me. I don't have secrets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no need when you've done it all, like Robert. We just know. If you say, "Hey, has Robert done that?" Yep, the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> it is yes. 
Yeah, Robert was telling me stories of a childhood diving expeditions that he'd go on personally <laughs> using a, an, an old Sears air compressor and a hose. Oh, wow. what? Just, just sticking the hose in my just mouth. Just sticking his hose in the mouth, getting a little bit of oxygen. That is wild. Oh, his dad, Not a very smart thing to do. His, his yeah. dad finally said, we're getting you scuba certified. So yeah, that, that was my 15th birthday present. Oh, oh wow. Nice. That's, that's, that's cool. fantastic. Uh, you've always been very motivated to do this, haven't you? Yep, and pushing the limits yeah. since yeah. Uh, since uh, <laughs> since he was a boy. Okay, aloha, everybody. As you know, um, we are currently on our ascent up to the surface with ROV Atalanta. Um, on the Ala Omwana Kaiuli, the Journey of the Deep Sea Voyager uh, expedition in Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument. Uh, I am currently in the control van with Malia and Kukui. Daniel, we will um, we would like to share an oli uh, or a mele, a song of gratitude, just because that we've been revealed with such great knowledge. Um, it has been such a privilege to witness this dive this expedition and to execute it with an amazing team, an amazing support and collaboration from around the world. Um, Makoko? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uhola ia kamakalo ala kua ike alohala Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Of course, mahalo nui. So I guess, uh, so talking about some of the wrecks and stuff that I've been on, I've, I've been inside the the rig of the Deepwater Horizon. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. Like with the girders all around us. Oh wow. That Thank was, you. That's with, with Bob Ballard sitting right here on my shoulder. Wow. <laughs> Telling me to get in there. <laughs> that's, if he was here, that's what he'd be doing. <laughs> wow. With a with a compressor and a hose, saying, yeah, get, in there. "Get in there, Robert!" Yeah, we're right inside the rig. That's crazy. Wow. I've been inside the engine room of a ship through a hole with an ROV. Wow. Uh, yeah. And we've gone inside the mouth of a cave with an ROV. It's <laughs> pretty cool. That's some precision driving there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Or piloting. It's kinda, yeah, it's pretty risky. <laughs> <laughs> Is everything? You know, he's all about the shot, so that's what yep. it, we're here to get the shot. Yeah. So, 
Is everything that you've piloted been tethered? No, no. I'm a, I started out in the, in the, the Alvin submarine. Oh, right, way. yeah. Yes. Of course you said that. So, and yeah, I just had the chance to go back out with it uh, last month. Cool. Yeah. Robert is uh, certainly, certainly a treasure of uh, the ocean exploration community. Yeah, we're we're pretty lucky, Robert. I'm glad I'm getting to know you and get to sit in the control van with you, my friend. We'll have to go diving with a compressor with a with this old Sears compressor and a no. garden yeah, hose unfortunately, here. Unfortunately, I can't scuba dive anymore because of a ear injury. I get, oh man, I get dizzy. Tough. Yeah. So I remember I um I got the chance to sail on Atlantis and watch colleagues dive on Alvin. I didn't do it myself. I don't know if I would be brave yeah. enough, but um I do remember it was funny. Uh, Daniel, this makes me think of you. So my colleagues, they had big beards that they'd been growing out for a long time. <laughs> and per regulations, they have to be able to get a certain, uh, I don't know what the you exact. You got it, the, the, the emergency breathing mask yeah. has to have a seal all the way around. Yep. <laughs> so these two, yeah. these two hardened <laughs> seamen with their big beards had to go clean shave and looking like Ooh. little babies. It was pretty funny. They yeah. weren't very happy about it. <laughs> That's awesome. So you give them one chance, you test them with the beard, <laughs> and if it leaks, you go around with an oxygen meter and you look for oxygen leaking out of the mask. And uh, yeah, then they get one chance to go and try and trim it down. <laughs> <laughs> the beard is pretty pass, annoying. If they don't pass, it's either they shave it off or they don't go. Yep. <laughs> It is pretty annoying. I'm, I've gotten used to the mask leaks over the years, but uh, when it's life, when my life depends on it, I'm I'm pretty sure I'd go ahead and just just yeah. uh, make the shave, make yeah. the shave happen. Just want to share a quick note. Uh, just a quick note. We're getting so many um, thank yous, mahalos to the whole crew. So all of those who are tuning in, they they just want. Everyone on the team, on the Nautilus team, here in the van, on ship, on shore, um, just how much that meant to them to be able to visit the Yorktown in that way. So, just another mahalo nui to to everybody, everybody here, and especially uh, Mahina and Malia Kukui, mahalo for sharing that oli with with the world, um, and on behalf of of. Uh, on behalf of Papa Hanamokuakea and this, this sacred waters here, that was a, it was amazing. It's a kako thing, Daniel. Everyone's voices. I mean, um, in unison, I I always feel like more voices yeah. make yeah. it that much Just more meaningful. But Kukui, do you have any manao? Ah, uh, no. Just mahalo for for that manao as well, and for your olalo no eo that you shared earlier. Um, and I feel like that is such an appropriate not only for this expedition but um, for this very special place that we got to visit mm -hmm. and just thinking of all the sacrifices that were made here mm -hmm. I believe, I strongly believe that that was an ololonoeo that they strongly used on that ship to become one as an ohana and I just want to mahalo all the veterans and for everybody who made sacrifices mm -hmm. um, on behalf of their countries um, everywhere. Ew. Mahalo, Kukui. Kukui, how many images did you take on this uh, on this dive? Do you have them? In, do, can you see there the total goes. number? Uh, I, I, I don't know how to do that yet. <laughs> <laughs> it had to be in the thousands. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Kukui is doing an awesome job logging the data for us and, and helping us be able to sort through all the still images and clips from from on board and uh, such a critical role so that the science can continue well after the dive. People can keep coming back and revisiting um, and, and studying uh, what we were able to see. Mm -hmm. Just made another turn on the spool and it's looking pretty good. Robert, you get it, it seems like you got it fixed up. Uh, <laughs> it's really hard to tell from this camera angle, but 
I see Ken's down there looking at it, so. <laughs> he's, he's not frantically trying to call us, so I think it looks okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's not waving his arms and screaming uh, into yeah. the camera. Yeah. No, we're nice steady <laughs> pull. I know a number of viewers were wondering if they can see that. I, I don't think we, we do show that camera on the, on the quad cam, so. Uh, we um, can. I mean, there isn't. If, if I don't we know what else we're looking at. If yeah. Robert had all the controls, then you'd be able to see it. But, but we hide some of the buttons from Robert. Because, you know, uh, and this is so much different than Alvin, because in Alvin, the, the pilot is it. You know, you're the <laughs> yeah. navigator, the pilot, the wow. co-pilot. Yeah. <laughs> so we know better. Yeah. We know better. Uh, this we, is we, this we, is better. We, this is much. <laughs> I think you get a much better product just because. There's a lot more eyes on it, and you know. It helps with the multitasking for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and and our viewers, I think, would get pretty bored after a while watching this uh, large spool just wrap uh, wrap. How can, you, how can you get bored looking? Maybe hypnotized. Taking a picture of. I don't like that. Yeah. Some of the other operations, they actually, they'll have somebody down in the winch room the whole time they're going up and down to watch the wire. Yeah. We have a lot of camera angles so that, you know, we pay attention to it. There are certainly things that can go wrong with the wire. Uh, one of the things is called uh, bird caging. If you get a little break in the wire and it hangs up on something, mm -hmm. it'll start stripping the, that piece of wire off. Mm -hmm. and it, can build up like a big tumbleweed of wire and uh, yeah, oh, destroy wow. the wire. It's pretty bad. What do you do in that scenario? Like, what's the resolution? Well, what would you do if that happened? Uh, well, it, it depends on how bad it is. If sometimes you can just overwrap it. If it's just a short section, you can cut off the bad piece and overwrap it, mm -hmm. which is you know band-aid fix, but. If it's really bad, you have to cut the wire at mm. that point. And, you know, wow. if it's happening right dead center in the middle of the spool, you're yeah, yeah, you're not going deep anymore. Yeah. The wire is like a quarter of a million dollars or something <laughs> for that Ooh. spool of wire. Wow. Quarter. And is the wire made of material that's somewhat rust resistant, or how do you keep that from happening and eating through it? So it's steel wire. Okay. Steel cable on the outside of it. It's plastic and a Teflon on the inside. Okay. Uh, there's three copper conductors, uh, 10 gauge wire, and then six fibers, fiber optics. Wow. That's what all our video and the data goes over. So, and then the, the whole thing is uh, we use a really thick lubricant that goes on the wire, special for the wire, that helps prevent it from rusting. Okay. And allows the, the allows it to, like, the strands to move a mm -hmm. little bit so it doesn't bind up and wow. break. Approximately how long is uh, the cable? It's more than 5,100. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. Yeah, I just have no idea. It's, it's, I think it's 6,000 something. Okay. I don't really remember. So not quite Bob Waters length. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't the deepest, so hmm. I think they went, what did we get to? 6,450? Six, wow. That the, yeah. That's impressive. 
So that's the that's the depth limit for the new Alvin, 6,500. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it just got recertified, what, a couple of years ago? Yeah. Yeah. So that was actually, I was on the final certification dives for the sub. Wow. Wow. Last, last August in the Puerto Rican Trench. Hmm. did some dives in the Cayman trough to the deepest hydrothermal vents in the world, wow. known hydrothermal vents in the world. Oh, wow. that's pretty special. Oh, like 5,500 or something. Wow. Yeah. wow, it's way down there. I had to drive with uh, with the lights all out, just a, just a dim red LED, because we wanted to see uh, the shrimp that live on the vents. We wow. wanted to see if they were affected by the lights. So drove in, uh, yeah, it was hydrothermal vents with just this dim red LED and the things, you know, black smoker. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and then we uh, we took some samples of the shrimp with uh, with RNA later to preserve them in the condition they're in and then turned the lights on mm -hmm. and then took another sample and, you yeah. know, the shrimp didn't seem like they were affected at all by the lights. Like, Interesting. Oh, wow. Yeah, there was no no change in behavior at all when we turned the lights on. Shrimp's gonna shrimp. Yeah. <laughs> That's a really interesting study because um, RNA later, what it does, it actually looks at the like the processes that are occurring within the shrimp because it doesn't just look at like all the all the DNA available. It looks at sort of like what's actually um, you know what proteins are actually being kind of made, sort of. That's, or like, well, because RNA is actually like a secondary material. Um, anywho. But yeah, no, it's really exciting that they're looking at, because you can look for like stress um, yeah. and that sort of thing. Thanks for explaining that. I guess that. it's really expensive, right? They, they really, they, they... I think in the spectrum of DNA analyses that are going on, it is not the most expensive, um, but it is it is still an expensive um, tool. Uh, and it's just like super salty water or something, right? I know it's real dense. It's like you can see it, you can see that, you know, the, the way it refracts the light when you use yeah. it. I was told it was just like super salty water. Well, oh, that's that's really interesting. I'm actually not sure what it is composed of, but um, was were they did they have the RNA like in sample containers already? Right. We had a uh, like a syringe thing to inject it into a sample jar. So you, you slurped up the shrimp and then injected it into the jar. That's amazing. That is so cool. I've never heard of that, and that's so important for capturing, you know, those differences and, um, you know, sort of stress protein. Like, yeah, that's cool. Oh, yeah, actually, I just looked back on um, some of my my work for my thesis, um, we were trying to do some genetic analysis on the worms. So we just sent it to University of Alabama. Um, but um, for my thesis project at UH Hilo, um, my advisor, Dr. Carla McDermott, um, let me use some of the worms um, that were found in this color for algae from Papa Discovery Center. And so we just did like, like an exploratory analysis, but we used RNA later to kind of preserve them so that they, they can be sent over to um, the University of Alabama for genetic analysis to confirm the species and identification, but I'm not sure if they did any, anything else with them, but then we also analyzed secondary metabolites um, using LCMS. Um, but yeah, there's so many ways you can use RNA later. It's such a multi-purpose tool, I feel like. Uh.
Are the eDNA samples, are those expensive to process? I believe those are some of the um, more expensive ones because of the number of, um, it's also the amount of data that you get back from the analyses and because of the, the size and the information that you're trying to receive, but also the, you know, you're trying to get capture the entire abundance of organisms there. So it's just a huge amount of processing. Yeah, yes. Pay, paying for processing power and supercomputing. So it's uh, those computers are really expensive, and not yeah. many university facilities have them. So. Right. But they, they are they are sort of making eDNA processing not not to get uh, broad surveys biodiversity surveys but targeted you know with uh, specific primers targeting certain species I I know that they're they're even engaging in some citizen science so developing tools in the you know in the four digits rather than the, rather than the six <laughs> or seven digits yeah. uh, <laughs> right it's so. very exciting the tools they're developing. Um, and one of the other interesting things is some of these, some of the methods of analyses, you get back pieces of DNA. You don't get back the full DNA strand. So then you have to put it all together again. Um, so it's it's a huge amount of work, as well as you know, it's uh, yeah. It, but it's so interesting what you can get out of it. It's also amazing the sort of core uh, all up until the 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 real processing power is required you know it's uh, i've worked with you know high school biology students to do some of the lab work assist in some of the lab work so you know doing some pcr just amplifying some of the genetics is things that some of those students are familiar with or they're getting exposed to early on so i feel like it's a really um a lot of it's really accessible as the cost comes down more communities will be able to get better pictures young people will be able to get involved in doing the science and um, the analysis is, uh, you know, the more experience you have, the more sophisticated analysis, the better modeling tools you have, the more you can do. But uh, exciting for, for me to think, you know, plenty of young Hawaiians across the islands, around the ocean could be uh, really engaged in collecting and processing, doing some of the initial analysis on this. Yeah, what a great start. What a great introduction to uh, this kind of science. Yeah. Yeah, not like, you know, back in my day, you just got a frog to dissect, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh. So I know they're doing the eDNA with uh, the COVID in the, you know, the, the city's wastewater and looking at, looking mm -hmm. at how much... Uh, population, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. population of the different COVID strains and, yeah. That's very interesting. Is that there in, in LA, uh, yeah. Robert? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Not as fun of a sampling location, the city's <laughs> wastewater, <laughs> no. as, yeah. as the deep ocean. But, uh, but still, incredibly still, important. Still important. Definitely. Yeah, still important. Yeah, I mean, as kids, we're all natural explorers and scientists. So it's it's, it's a joy to see there. people uh, yeah. uh, nurture that, yeah. and inspire folks to uh, keep doing this kind of science, keep asking these questions. It's the my favorite part of the work I get to do with Purple Maya Foundation, okay. also with the Voyaging Society, just uh, bringing these ancestral technologies and yep. contemporary tools that and technologies, right putting them in the hands of young people. And sometimes yes. they, they okay. oftentimes they show me how to, to do tell. things that like I hadn't even right figured there. out yet. So absolutely, such yeah. quick learners, super, oh, Akamai, super just smart, and pulling off of it, or if that's uh, just, just have to give the kids a chance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we ought maybe we ought to have Ken like take a look at the transitions. And, like, Okay. Yeah. You wanna, you wanna go talk to him? I'll, yeah. I'll, you wanna, go, I'll stop you right there. radio All right. him. Yeah, just go talk to him if he wants to go down. look at the transitions. Zach's gonna take a little break on the on the winch. We're gonna hold our depth and uh, 
I know so many of you are just dying to see the spool. You really want to see it, but uh, I'll tell you what it looks like. It looks like a spool with a bunch of cable wrapped around well, it. Well, I know several people that would be very interested in seeing this pool right now. Yeah, yeah. sure, yeah. <laughs> Let's see if I can put it up. Yeah. It's taken about uh, three wraps on uh, on this current, uh, current wrap around the spool, but was looking, the edge, I guess, was, we're going to go have a look. Go have a look. Yeah. Ken's yep. going to take a look at Some it. Some of the ROV engineers ashore, I'm sure, are very <laughs> interested in the cable right now. <laughs> They're asking for it. They're asking yep. for it in the comments. But uh, yeah. it's all part of keeping the equipment and the personnel safe. That's right. That's yeah. right. It's an important part of the job. Until Atalanta is safely on deck and we're in transit mapping again, then the, uh, the ROV engineers, everybody on the ROV team is. Uh, super focused on completing the job you know mm -hmm. archaeologists are probably already snoring but good uh, ROV <laughs> they've team, been up for a long time <laughs> they, yeah. have, they have but the rov team uh staying on top of it yeah hmm. yeah and what you were saying daniel about you know uh voyaging and integrating technologies into that that, that learning it's never a one-way path you know, we all have something we can learn from each other. Oh, That's one of the coolest things about this ship. You know, all of us are learning all of these different things from each other. On watch, off watch, in the labs, in the galley, Ayo. in the lounge. It's really special. It is. It's incredible the, how the, when, when doing things the right way, learning just flows in all directions. You know, it's uh, the boundaries on whose teacher whose student uh, get so blurred and we all become teachers and students together and mm -hmm. and learning with each other it's a lot of fun it's the way it should be yeah I most agree. definitely i agree so i don't know about anyone here i don't know if anyone's a um a Lego nerd, yeah, like I right. um, or even scale models. I don't know if you guys have ever done a scale model, but this just, I don't know, this expedition kind of inspired me and I was looking to see if there was some good scale models out there of the Yorktown and oh. <laughs> I don't know, it might be a little project. It'd be kind of cool just to commemorate what oh, we did. Be, yeah, I used to do, I did a couple of those as a kid. I haven't it's done any in a long time, but yeah, that's yeah, it's a really interesting idea. A 3D puzzle, a 3D puzzle of oh Yorktown. Oh my gosh. Those yeah. are fun. <laughs> Yeah, I love I love scale models and Legos. Legos could be, yeah. oh boy, all right. be stepping on those buggers all the whole time. Winch, <laughs> Winch is coming to Sat Three. There we go, friends. Oh wow! <laughs> wow. To all of our ROV friends, you have Amber <laughs> to thank. Send her flowers, candies, <laughs> chocolates. Chocolate. Yeah, this what a gift you uh, you asked a mm -hmm. thousand times, and so you received. We we uh, appreciate yeah. you all. I just got the uh, official okay to show oh, it. Oh, nice. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Nice. Oh. Yeah, very cool. We've uh, well, I think we looks like we've made it up. Uh, are we at about 4,400 meters, about Robert? About 4,417 yep. per Grafana. Okay, so yeah, we're, uh, we've are we already come up, uh, I don't know, about a sixth or so of the way, a seventh of the way. About Can't a have, sixth, yeah. Yeah, so uh, that's, that's good news. So far, so good, yeah. So far, so good. Things are working. Uh, we Caesar. have about a... We have about another half hour, right, on, on watch, and then uh, yep. we'll hand it over to the pros to uh, to bring you all the way to the surface, yep. the 12 to 4 team. So, yeah, Atalanta will be on deck uh, this afternoon. So we're just uh, making sure that the ascent goes uh, as expected. And uh, then we'll be on our way in this beautiful sea state mm -hmm. oh. that we've been gifted with. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So thank this you, Kanaloa. Yeah, thank you, uh -huh. Mahalo, thank you. Kanaloa. That's right. Wow. Yeah, because this is a uh, this is a part of the ocean where the weather can be a, a definite factor mm -hmm. in uh, our operations. When we were out here on 138 last year, um, we ran into some weather. Uh, basically while we were trying to get our first dive in on uh, King George Seamount. And we had to, uh, we ultimately had to pull that dive 
early because the sea state deteriorated and uh, we lost that weather window for uh, uh, Atalanta and Hercules. Wow. And um, we ultimately decided to uh, uh, transit north and uh, got permission to exit the monument for a couple of days to uh, uh, work on some uh, science targets uh, just north of Papahanaumokuakea. And uh, there we were able to conduct some excellent dives until the weather conditions cleared and we could start working our way south again and back into the monument. Wow. Yeah, incredible hearing Daniel's story of some of those mm -hmm. Okeanos attempts at uh, diving the, the USS Yorktown and facing uh, 20, 30 foot seas, massive oh, waves, yeah. just uh, yeah. incredible. I <laughs> cannot imagine that, yeah. Not diving this deep with Ooh. weather like yeah. that, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. Not diving at all, weather yeah. like that. So. Yeah, which is why yeah. I'm so thankful for yeah. the conditions mm -hmm. that we've that we've had the last 24 hours that have permitted this uh, this dive to happen. That's right, yeah. that's a good All of us were uh, very anxious about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, it's fun watching everybody on the ship tuning into A-frame acceleration data as they're uh, looking at just mm -hmm. how much we're rolling with the sea state. And, and watching and that uh, cable tension like a hawk. Watching that <laughs> cable tension so closely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a lot of things came together the right way. Mm -hmm. That's right. And we were reminded by our expedition leads too that um, previous uh, operations that came out here to uh, uh, do these kinds of uh, maritime archaeology surveys have also had their share of equipment issues. All good. Yep. So it's uh, it's not uncommon. You know, going to sea, especially in these very remote areas, is so challenging. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's true exploration. Right. A lot of people want to know about what our plans are, what our plans are, and I, <laughs> you know, it's... Yeah. Uh, it's uh, important yeah. to have plans, but yep. it's also important to realize yeah. that we we <laughs> never got deep enough to take uh, it out. Our plans before, are not so what's going to happen. You know, so that's uh, that's why we, we have the backup plans. We're probably getting yes. the so yeah. the backups probably to the backup. on this wrap. It's almost we'll always on that side. Is probably where we're almost always an evolving the, plan. Yeah, ever changing, yeah. always evolving. Right. You gotta leave room for the magic, and in this okay. case, it aligned very well for us, so we are very fortunate. <laughs> it did, and we have a resilient crew mm -hmm. and a lot of creativity, and that's uh, how we managed to pivot to uh, Atalanta, and Atalanta gave us uh, a wonderful dive. That was great, Atalanta did. We owe it to Atalanta, Atalanta to get it safely back on the deck, rinse, rinsed off and then uh, a little bit rested before <laughs> yes. it's gonna do it again. What's the ROV equivalent of uh, giving, uh, giving Adelina a cookie? <laughs> <laughs> uh, a hose down? <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah, you just have to give Robert. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah. We can give cookies to Robert. <laughs> Three o'clock, right? Man, yeah. wouldn't that be something? <laughs> Did anybody see chocolate chip cookies yesterday? Yeah. 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 I thought I could have sworn I smelled them yesterday. I smelled chocolate. Oh, they, yeah. Yeah, they made them. They had them yesterday. They had them? What? Yes. What? You guys yeah, set your oh alarm. Dude, set your alarm. Three o'clock cookie time. Because <laughs> they go quick. Oh, yeah. I'm just, yeah we're, we're a really kind crew now. until cookie hour comes I around. I know. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. oh. so, me, it was lunch, and me, I was telling Robert, I was like, hey, man, it smells like chocolate. Chocolate yeah. chip cookies. And he's like, where are they at? I was like, I don't know. They're clearly not making enough. Yeah. So I can't do gluten, which means I just get to sit back and watch the chaos. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Same. <laughs> you can smell them though, which is a nice. Oh uh, yes. The <laughs> I had the bag for sensory. some Oreos last night. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> 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 so I have some oat milk chocolate that I should share with you. George what was, was that? hanging I have around an oat milk chocolate pantry. bar. I'll share with you. That's <laughs> uh, may I interject here? I have a chocolate oh, stash too. Um, Ooh, Virginia just, just reminded me that tomorrow's Sunday. Oh, oh, ice cream. Ice cream. Oh. Ice cream. Oh. 
Oh man, I need to save some uh, chocolate chip cookies to put in my Sunday. Yeah, oh, there you go. That's They're good gonna idea. disappear extra no, fast no, today. Yeah. At three I know. Yeah. yeah. Chocolate chip ice cream sandwich. Oh, Ooh. nice. Oh, nice. Oh. Yes. <laughs> mm. really yes. Okay. Exactly. Well, it must be approaching lunchtime. We're all hungry. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, that's true. It is. It is lunchtime right now, so we know the the twelve to four crew is uh, eating all the best parts of lunch and uh, <laughs> yeah, hopefully saving yeah. us. And then we descend on it. Get the yeah. what's left. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, there's some mixed vegetables. <laughs> hey, I'm not complaining about mixed veggies. Yeah. Oh. It's been good. It's been hitting the spot, man. To uh, to all of our viewers, uh, please uh, allow us and forgive us for this uh, little bit of silliness that was a heavy. Uh, a heavy several hours on board on on the USS Yorktown, and uh, we're uh, nice to be ascending, coming back up to the surface, and uh, returning to our normal silly selves. I think a it's a lot of relief van. too. It is. That yeah, it is. We we were able to accomplish this. It is big time. Yeah. So I was just down on the Atlantis, and they have an ice cream freezer that oh. they have Hagen Dazs bars. And such things in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's dangerous. That is dangerous. <laughs> but here it's like a bunch of piranhas when they put the cookies in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's because we all do such a good job going and utilizing the gym. Yeah. There that, we go. Uh, you know, we can do it. <laughs> How many how many times have you hit the gym? We gotta go around the room and say how many how many times people have been in the gym? I Ooh, pass Virginia and I four or five are, times a day. <laughs> <laughs> Twice a rip up. Virginia yeah. and I are leading the way at a at a at a nice donut, a nice zero. <laughs> Robert like passes it. by multiple times. <laughs> yeah. Good. And I'm up at donut level too, but I also sling around a lot of rocks in the lab. That's so true. I get a little bit of a workout That's there. That's true. Val's uh, <laughs> pumping rocks down in the lab. She's uh, she's. She's getting her workout in, getting their workout in for sure. Yeah, we have a we have a 20 pounder in there right now. Whoa, wow. yeah. that's serious. Yeah. Ooh, wow. that is. All right, so my watch tells me I did it. I've gone eight times. Wow, nice, nice work. Eight not bad. Times? That's yeah. like once a day. Almost. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Impressive. Impressive. Yeah, I need to need to start doing that. We still have three weeks left on this expedition, yeah. and uh, <laughs> if the Oreo onslaught and uh, <laughs> and ice cream Sundays continue, which they will, then uh, uh. I'd be in trouble. So. Yeah, I made it down twice, and on my second one yesterday, I uh, I was almost victim to the treadmill treadmill <laughs> rolls. Oh no! Oh, no. Yeah, I, I, I've done so treadmills sorry. on boats before and they've normally been okay, but this one the handles lie just a little lower and so it's harder oh, to catch no. yourself. But we're good, we're good. No, do you no, no, do we're the, good. the treadmill, not the elliptical one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's harder. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like you're, it's like a trail run almost. Like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is. It's like, <laughs> like oh, I'm off to the side now. One of the best reasons to go to the gym is to watch other people try to work yeah. out. It's pretty, <laughs> pretty entertaining. I have new adopted our uh, data engineer Matt's uh, kettlebell workouts oh. and let me tell you <laughs> hard that's some core <laughs> that's some core workout down there balancing yourself with the yeah. kettlebell oh this is all right well, I'm impressed efficient <laughs> yeah yeah being on a boat is half the workout <laughs> yeah. just yeah. keeping your balance yep yeah it burns a surprising amount of calories just uh, you know trying to stay upright versus the uh, what the ship's doing yeah. I wish I burned calories hitting my head on things. <laughs> yeah, you would be yeah. winning there. Yeah. I'd be getting really uh, fit. Uh, that, that you outer and me door. both, Daniel. <laughs> yeah. That outer door to the, uh, that goes in and out of the, the, the wet lab. Yeah. I, uh, I've banged my head on that multiple times. Climbing uh, through those windows. Really? They're not I've even mostly real avoided doors. it this expedition, but I know it's coming as soon as we toss a little bit. <laughs> and I found out the hard way that when you're uh, carrying in a larger rock sample from uh, Hercules, uh, it's really hard to crouch down and get through that door while you're carrying that weight. Yeah. And you're gonna bang your head. Ouch. So there, there's Ouch. there's a there's a technique that I have for getting in and out of that door <laughs> with uh, some of the larger pohaku. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Work as a team. Yep. Yeah. Work as a team. Oh, it really is just still so impressive. I'm just thinking about uh, the incredible work uh, that's gone in for years for 
for so many years, and then especially the last couple of years as our expedition leaders and Ocean Exploration Trust, NOAA Office of NOAA Ocean Exploration and the uh, Ocean Exploration Cooperative Institute and so many partners just to, uh, to make these, this dive on USS Yorktown possible. Um, the dive 25 years ago, all that information that, that that relayed to the team and sort of planning this was still, I'm still just kind of blown away by, by what uh, I just witnessed from, from all of you and from this whole team. And just really, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to need some ice cream sundaes to really, yeah. really process this, but it's, uh, yeah, really, really amazing. Teamwork mm -hmm. can happen. How's the internet? I'm not. We're not getting any fan comments on, on the winch. Come on, everybody. <laughs> They're watching it right now. I guarantee you. They're watching. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Especially right now. <laughs> this part right here is the critical part. It is. Uh, this is. It where, is. This yeah. is where the, this is the that turn. section this is. is the yeah. turn. I was laughing at something else, Robert. Uh. We, we have a uh, we have a, a question about <laughs> about you and Dan C coming in about being 3D printer experts. Yeah. yeah. But uh, and it's from uh, Terry in Vancouver, BC. But I'm not sure I can read the rest of the question. It sounds like uh, <laughs> sounds like it might be an inside joke. I'll I'll let you read it uh. later. <laughs> you don't let me see that comments coming in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there, um, we have questions about if there are already have questions if there are plans to return to the USS Yorktown with uh, little Hercules. And um, as far as I know, uh, this is the last planned expedition uh, for Nautilus, the Ala Amwana Kaiuli expedition into Papahanaumokuakea. So that's the last planned one. Doesn't mean it's the last one that will happen, but um, uh, but we don't uh, we don't currently have plans. We're lucky. We got a great view. Um, heard from our ROV pilots. We they would love the view that we could have gotten with Little Hercules. They they know just uh, just how close they could have gotten. We heard stories from from our ROV pilot Robert about. Um, being in engine rooms and uh, taking ROVs into all kinds of interesting positions, but uh, yeah, also, we're we're happy with what we got. I think we can. Uh, I be also recovered for that. A, a compass from a ship from the <laughs> 18th century that um, it still had the oil in the compass and it actually still moved. No, oh, with wow. brass compass. Wow. A working compass. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and we recovered that into a foam lined box, and it's apparently in the lobby of. Uh, the Marine Archaeological Society. That's pretty cool. I thought you were going to yeah. say it's in your living room. Right now. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get to keep this. <laughs> I found a shipwreck actually, uh, accidentally. Did? We were looking for a science mooring, and I found a chain on the bottom, and it was pretty obviously not the science mooring chain. And we followed it to the end, and it was a shipwreck. Wow. Oh, an old wooden shipwreck that there wasn't anything really left of it but ballast stones and some wine bottles. But, hmm. Yeah. What part of wow. the world was this? That was off of North Carolina. Our spool lovers said they're just in too much, they're too much in awe to speak. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like it was a clean transition. So yeah, that's nice. a good excellent. Thing. That's a, it's a good sign. It's a good sign. My dad was apparently listening in when I mentioned the scale model. He messaged me that I spoiled my Christmas present that oh. he was getting. <laughs> oh. You got a new Lego set coming. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. He enables my nerdy ways. Yes. That's like, awesome. Like Encourage every it. good father should. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. It's a good lesson for that. all of us dads. <laughs> my daughter's 27. Oh. <laughs> I got two grandkids. 
What do, what do they call you, Robert? What's their What's their name for you? Are, they, are you just Grandpa, or do you got a special special I'm, name? I'm Grandpa Bob because they got a, they get extra grandpas. So. <laughs> All right, Grandpa Bob. Grandpa Bob, that's a good one. That's the more the merrier. One. Yes. Yes. People who maybe uh, just not quite familiar with the ship or haven't seen our spool yet, they're and maybe can't see the depth changes on uh, Atalanta or wondering if the, the line's coming in or out. How, how, would, they, how would they be able to tell, uh, Bob, without looking at the depth changes on Atalanta and knowing about the ship, what, what are some of the things that would give it away? That you're coming in? Yeah. Because there's, there's more cable going on the drum than it's coming off the drum. <laughs> there you go. That's a good one. You're adding, you're adding layers of cable on top of one another instead yeah. of losing, losing layers. So. Yeah. But to an untrained eye, maybe that maybe that's uh, hard to pick up on right away. But yeah, so this are. is this is a traction winch setup. You can see it's like a block and tackle. Yeah, there's multiple pulleys, and so the, it, the advantage of this winch system that's is that there's no real tension on the drum. It's just it has like 2,000 pounds of tension, steady, which isn't really much compared to like how much the you know tension on the wire is. Because so we're over 10,000 still, right? We have 11,000 pounds on the, the wire. So the, the traction head takes that, the tension in. Mm. And, uh, so the wire doesn't get, we had a problem before where the wire would get smashed on the drum because you're putting all that force, uh -huh. you know, yeah. on top of the wire and that, and it has a plastic core so it can kind of get smooshed in there. And that's bad. And the, the cable can uh, develop sort of uh, electrically weak spots. And there's 2,600 volt three phase power going through the wire. So the insulation gets thin, it'll, it'll actually blow a hole through the side of the wire. Yeah. And then the whole thing is destroyed. Wow. That's, uh, that's transporting all of our power, all of our data down to our vehicles and back up to the ship. Yep. So it's, uh, this, this cable needs to be maintained very, very well um, to can, you know, continue those operations. So uh, it's very, very important. We do have actually a question, uh, someone who missed the, missed the Yorktown, but <clears throat> is joining us now and was wondering if the repairs that were made in Pearl Harbor to Yorktown were vis visible. Um, on the deck, and if I remember correctly, some of those locations uh, showed that some of those repairs had, had probably been blown off, either in battle damage or in, in sinking. Um, those repairs didn't didn't make it. Is that is that what other people are remembering? Uh, yeah, I don't remember if they were the Pearl Harbor repairs or something that they were doing on site. But yeah, that's that's what uh, that's uh, what Mike and Hans were thinking. Is that we saw evidence of some of the repairs that had been. Uh, like blown off or uh, uh, during 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 the sinking. Yeah, I remember specifically they mentioned that they were not expecting to see a hole near the middle aft elevator, I think, um, uh, and that that had been um, uh, that there was evidence of uh, bomb damage that had been repaired, right, um, and that that. Um, that small hole, the repair had come off. There were some, some lo looked like some cabling over top of it, but that yeah, the some hole sort of a was actually, yes, the hole itself was unexpected, um, and they expected that actually that came off probably as the vessel started to settle. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah, thank you, Virginia and Val. Yeah, the, uh, the experts who can answer that question in uh, more detail are uh, getting some much needed rest. <laughs> so uh, we'll try to relay some of those questions to them later too. Oh, we're getting some great technical questions on the winch. Uh, you're right, Bob. These people really do love and watch, <laughs> watch closely. They're, hey, they're wondering. Respect. 
They're wondering if it's controlled actively with a closed loop or passively with a pressure compensated flow control valve. You want to take that one? <laughs> I'm not really the winch guy. No, <laughs> there we go. All right, we've done our part. We've put it yeah. on the screen for you. You'll uh, you'll have to do your further further investigations. Yeah. All of our awesome, uh, yeah, oh, wow. awesome awesome folks ashore who are uh, following along and tuning in, even as we uh, bring Atalanta back to the surface from our really um, unforgettable and uh, historic. Uh, third dive of the Ala Moana Kaiuli expedition on board exploration vessel Nautilus to the USS Yorktown at just over 5,100 meters depth. And uh, we've got a long, long way home back up to the ship, but uh, I think we're, we're now under 4,000 meters, so making good progress. Uh, the winch is doing its job exceptionally well. Glad, glad we don't have to uh, haul this by hand. So oh. <laughs> that'd be a lot of line. A lot of line. I get pretty worn out on just our 50, 50 meter oh anchor line on the on <laughs> yeah, um, generally. Uh, so. oh. We have a viewer just tossing out a hint to uh, to all of the other viewers um, that if you did miss the Yorktown uh, dive coverage, uh, you can scroll back up to 12 hours on the YouTube live link and uh, should be able to uh, to rewatch some of that for now. Um, I think that'll be turned off when we turn off the U YouTube live feature um, of the dive. Uh, or it'll at least right? just expire. Good. Yep, we performed a survey entirely around the ship and then uh, across portions of the flight deck to uh, get as much imagery as possible and uh, assess uh, condition of the ship uh, compared to 25 years ago, as well as uh, document uh, battle damage and any other details that uh, we could pick up. And that was a very slow, deliberate process given the depth of the dive, uh, the tension on the cable, and uh, the long time it takes to translate ship movements down to Atalanta, five kilometers, which was at the time five kilometers below us. Yeah. At present, uh, it's a little bit under 3,800 uh, meters, 3.8 kilometers below us and rising. It's an interesting question about uh, contingencies for cable failure. If, if this cable were to some reason break or snap or stop functioning, is there another way to recover Atalanta or are we gonna need some assistance from, uh, from yeah, another ship? We don't ship? have a cable. We don't have any way to get down there. Oh. Yeah. So we do uh, have spare cable back in our facility in the San Pedro, but that's quite a ways away. Quite a ways mm -hmm. away, yeah. The contingency plan is spool carefully, winch carefully, and uh, get it all right the first time. And yeah, make don't sure mess up. Don't mess up, that's yep. the contingency <laughs> plan. <laughs> oh, this is uh, a reminder, this is true exploration. This is, uh, so many things could go wrong, and it just makes it all the more spectacular when so many things go right, like they have. Yep. On this we're dive. very careful to watch out for small problems because especially uh, with us being as remote as we are, small problems can very quickly become big problems. So we, we communicate with each other. We try to let each other know about things as soon as we can and get, uh, get those little things fixed before they get bigger. Robert, there's a question about the uh, the bingo balls, the 3D printed bingo, bingo balls. balls on the on the Niskin bottles yeah. um, on the triggers, and yeah. uh, how those are holding up. And uh, so you know. I think 
<laughs> that the two that got destroyed were probably not printed 100%. Like, they weren't, like, they had some voids. They weren't dense mm. enough. Yeah, they weren't dense enough. Those two, those two were the first ones printed, and I think they probably were not 100%. It does so take they a have little... been replaced with fresh ones, and the other balls have been holding up fine. So, yeah, 3D printing does take a little dialing in at first. Yeah, well, especially when you send it down to the bottom. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah that poor space can become an issue very quickly. <laughs> And then people being a little too aggressive on the miskin poles, too. Mm. You don't have to get an iron grip on them. <laughs> <laughs> Do you print those in PLA or ABS or it's something? It's just PLA. Okay. Yeah, yeah PLA is relatively strong, but like, like all plastics, it has its failure point. Yeah. Are we um are we cl are we cleaning or washing rinsing this cable as it's coming back Not on, on this board? Time. Is Not that this another one. question? Yeah. Yeah. From me. I think we're just. Is that just it. you, or is that coming from the internet? Because uh, <laughs> oh. I know who the people. Are. It's, it's you know, from you the internet. know who they are. Huh? <laughs> They're checking on you. They're going. Does Robert all remember these, to clean his All these questions are coming from yeah, yeah. the same individuals. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we are coming up on a watch change. So you'll uh, start hearing uh, the uh, 12 to 4 voices uh, joining us. Again, it's been uh, just the privilege of a lifetime. So so thankful for this uh, this watch, our earlier watch together mm -hmm. for this whole expedition. And uh, now I'm ready for lunch. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Definitely. Guys. Yeah, you know, I think that's something, when we first um, came into view of the USS Yorktown, I, like, my heart totally stopped for a moment, I'm like, so, I know. Um, a Same. privilege, a pleasure, mahalo everyone, thank you so much, thank you NAV, pilots, ROV team, ROV at Atlanta. Yeah, mahalo ya oko for all your guys' hard work. Yeah, thank you everybody. What an incredible dive. Mm -hmm. uh, here's to a safe recovery at the surface in the next few hours. All right, video watch change. Thank you. <laughs> 